A map is a diagram showing an area of land and some of the key features. So here we have a map of Transom Island, the Treasure Island. And this map has a scale. That distance there represented from left to right of that red shape represents 100 meters on the real Transom Island. So, let's say we want to work out how far is it from Clear Spring to the lookout point. Well, what we need to know is how many of those red scale markers will fit in between those two points. Let's see. Three and a little bit more. So, I can estimate the distance between Clear Spring and Lookout Point as being 300 and about 20 meters, 320 meters. And that's how you use the scale on a map. Right, here is a map of Bangkok. And right now, I am right down at the bottom of this map around there. And my dentist that I need to get to is right there. So how far is it? Well, in this case, I'm gonna to have to go around these roads. So, it's not a straight line. I'm going to use a piece of string and follow the road route that I intend to take until I get to the dentist, which is right there. So, this is the length if it was a straight line. So, now I look for a scale on the map and I can see there's a scale right here. This distance represents five kilometers. So, put my string, there's one lot of five kilometers. Two, three, almost exactly four lots of five kilometers, 20 kilometers. Now here is a very big map of Australia. And I want to know how far is it from Melbourne to Sydney. There's Melbourne and there's Sydney. I can see the road coming around here, but actually I want to know the straight distance. We call this sometimes as the crow flies. That just means the direct straight line distance between two places. Now the scale of this map is that one centimeter on the map represents 40 kilometers in real life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure how many centimeters it is and I can see it is about 18 centimeters as the crow flies. So 18 centimeters, I want to work out 18 times 40. So that is roughly 720 kilometers as the crow flies but of course if you went by the road it would be a bit longer in fact it's about it's about 900 kilometers if you go by road but as the crow flies the direct distance is about 720 kilometers this is a map of part of northern new jersey in the united states and it's a place where when i was younger i would go for summer camp, Camp Tamarack, around Lake Tamarack. And we would hike sometimes in the hills, uh, we'd follow the lines of the streams, and we'd go and maybe visit Lake Todd. And you can see the two lakes here. And I always wondered how far they were in a straight line, how far apart they were in a straight line. Now the scale of this map is 1 to 9028. It's given as a ratio. And what that really means is that one centimeter on the map represents 9,028 centimeters in real life. But dear me, who knows how far 9,028 centimeters is? Let's convert that to a more understandable unit because I know that there are 100 centimeters in a meter. So if I divide that large number by 100, I'll get it in meters. So one centimeter represents 90.28 meters. Well, I'm going to say that's 
more or less 90 meters. One centimeter represents 90 meters. So now what I'll do is I'll measure the distance in a straight line between the two lakes and I can see it is roughly four centimeters. So that's four lots of 90 meters. And that will be 360 meters. So that's how far the two lakes were apart, 360 meters. Here's another map showing a place I would go when I was much younger. This is in the Lake District of the United Kingdom. And this map has a scale of 1 to 50,000. So this is a more zoomed out map if you'd like to look at it that way. So let's have a go at interpreting the scale. Let's say that one centimeter on the map represents 50,000 centimeters in real life. That's what that ratio means. But of course 50,000 centimeters is something difficult to get a, a fix on. So because 100 centimeters are the same as one meter, I can divide that number by 100 and say that one centimeter represents 500 meters. That's much more easy to cope with when you're working out distances. Now, I also know that 1000 meters is the same as a kilometer. So another way of expressing the scale is that two centimeters represents one kilometer. That's the two 500 meters, you see, make a kilometer. So there are lots of different ways of expressing the scale of a map. And the idea is to pick the one that's most useful. So let's say we wanted to find the distance between Ambleside and the National Park Center. And we're going to do it in a straight line using the ruler, measuring the centimeters at seven centimeters. So I think I'll use this version of the scale. One centimeter represents 500 meters, so seven centimeters will represent 3,500 meters. Which of course, if I divide by a thousand to convert the meters into kilometers, is three and a half kilometers. So from Ambleside to the National Park Center is three and a half kilometers. Let's look at some of the questions that might be on the online exercise or in your exam. The scale of a map is one centimeter represents two kilometers. Express this scale as a ratio. So let's write it down. One centimeter represents two kilometers. To express it as a ratio, I need to get the two measurements in the same units and then I can disregard the units because ratios don't have units. So, first of all, I'll change the kilometers into meters by multiplying by a thousand. And then I'll change the meters into centimeters by multiplying by a hundred. And now both of those distances are using the same units, so I can write them down as a ratio as one to two hundred thousand. Let's try another question. This scale of this map is four centimeters represents five kilometers. So uh, do the same again. Write down that four centimeters represents five kilometers, changing the kilometers to meters by multiplying by a thousand, and then changing the meters to centimeters by multiplying by a hundred. Now they're both in the same units. I can drop the units and write them as a ratio. But that ratio is not in its lowest terms. Both sides of the ratio have a common factor of four, so if I divide both sides by 4, I get 1 to 125,000. That is the scale of the map expressed as a ratio. Many, many years ago, I went to Hollywood and I found this map showing where all the big stars lived. Now, unfortunately, there's no scale on this map. I wonder what the scale would be. Well. I happen to know that Ozzy Osbourne's house over here is about three kilometers away from the legendary Greta Garbo estate. So let me measure that on the map. That is very roughly 15 centimeters between those two places. 
So I can say that 15 centimeters represents three kilometers. Or to simplify that, let's just take a third of both of those numbers. Five centimeters represents one kilometer. Now in order to find out the scale of this map as a ratio, what I need to do first is put both of those measurements in the same unit. So let's convert a kilometer into centimeters. So five centimeters is 1,000 meters. And of course a meter is 100 centimeters. So five centimeters on the map represents 100,000 centimeters in real life. Okay, we're almost there. We can express that as a ratio now, as 5 to 100,000. But that ratio can be simplified. I can divide both sides by 5, and I have 1, 2, and then divide that by 5, I will get 20,000. So, this map here is of a scale 1 to 20,000. This is a map which just shows part of a national park in Hawaii. And I have added a fictional reservoir, a very rectangular shaped reservoir to explain a point. So let's say that on this map, the area of that reservoir is 32 square centimeters. Now look at the scale of the map, it's one, to 5,000. That means real life is 5,000 times bigger than the map. So you'd think you could multiply that 32 by 5,000 to get the surface area of the real reservoir. But in fact that is wrong. And the important point to learn here is that the ratios are always the ratios of lengths. They're not the ratios of areas. There's a different video on enlargements if you'd like to know how to calculate the area factor from the scale factor. But for now, just remember the fact that scales on maps are talking about lengths. So what we need to do is consider the length. So let's look at the lengths of this reservoir. It's eight centimeters on the map by four centimeters wide. So now we can use that ratio to convert those lengths to the real lengths in real life. So the width would be 4 centimeters multiplied by that 5,000 and then converted to meters because that's a more sensible unit to use for a large distance. And then the length is the 8 centimeters multiplied by the 5,000 of the ratio and that converted to meters is 400 meters. So now we know the width and the length of the real reservoir, we can work out the area of the real reservoir, and it turns out to be 80,000 square meters. So here's my map of the world. I wonder what scale this is. Well, in actual fact, the scale might not be that useful. Let me give you an example. Look at the United Kingdom here. How many times would the United Kingdom fit into Greenland? Quite a lot of times, you can see. Greenland is so much bigger than the United Kingdom. But if we actually looked at a globe, this is my blow-up globe, and have a look at the United Kingdom on the globe, and then have a look at Greenland, Greenland doesn't seem that much bigger when you look at it on the globe. Now, this is the true representation, of course, but on a map, because it's impossible to have the surface area of a sphere on a rectangular sheet of paper, they've actually spread out a little bit more what's up at the top, because all of these points, of course, come together at a point, the North Pole up there somewhere. So, relative areas, particularly on a rectangular map, aren't necessarily giving you the right idea of proportion. In fact, here is another map of the world. This is a different sort of projection. And this time, they've shown each of the countries according to their surface area. So if I just open this up, you will see that 
on this map, Greenland looks quite different, doesn't it? A lot wider than tall. So be very careful when looking at two-dimensional representations of three-dimensional objects. And finally, another example of a place where scale won't help you is the map of the London Underground. Because this really is just a diagram showing you the order of the stations along each of the tube lines and where they intersect. But the actual distances don't make any sense. So the distance between Lancaster Gate and Marble Arch could in fact be a lot further than the distance between Oxford Circus and Tottenham Court Road, even though this one looks the larger distance. So it's just a diagram. In fact, a survey suggested that 30% of passengers actually take longer routes than they need to because of the nature of this diagram, which people interpret as a map. OK, now it's your turn to have a go at the online exercise. Don't forget to press the check button regularly as you're working through the questions to see if you're getting them right. And if you make a mistake, have another think and correct your answer and then press that check button again. Don't forget to claim your trophy when you've got to the end. And there are lots more activities on the Transom website for you to have a go at to improve your mathematics and you can claim hundreds of trophies. So, what are you waiting for? Get going! Bye! You can find Transom Mathematics at www.transum.org where you're welcome to use all of the activities absolutely free. Or jump in with both feet and become a Transom subscriber.